Uh, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar for tonight. Uh, my name is David Stone from the Agribusiness Development Institute. Um, I'm, my role is the opera ABDI Operations Manager and also present at some of the workshops that we run. So I'm joined tonight by Mark McNamee who's the an ABDI Senior Associate, a uh, business and sales coach as well. So how are you going Mark? Good Dave, how are you? Very how are well. Everyone? Yeah, very well, thank you. So uh, the topic tonight is on uh, developing an effective business plan. Um, it's 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 a really important topic and it's um, quite topical at the moment. Um, and that's probably why close to just shy of about 100 people have registered for this webinar. So a lot of people have quite an interest in it. And developing a business plan is really part of creating any high performing business, I guess. So it's quite interesting at the moment because we're fresh off the back of delivering a range of um, business planning workshops for the uh, Queensland Agricultural Training Colleges in Queensland. So we're quite up to date with a lot of the issues that a lot of people out in the ag space are actually facing. Um, so it's a, it's a good time to be running this webinar. So I guess business planning, it, it keeps coming up in conversations all the time at the moment. When we talk to organisations like um, QRider, which is Queensland's Rural Lending Authority, about their loans and grants um, and lenders such as banks, probably one of the most common issues that they see in their applications for finance is poor planning and I guess a real lack of direction. And that's something they've communicated to us over and over. So it's something that really needs a lot of attention. And that's really why tonight's webinar is so important and also business planning in general. So as you can see at the top of the uh, slide there, I probably just want to remind everyone of what the aim of what we're trying to achieve with these webinars and um, a lot of the work that we do at ABDI through our business development programs is we're looking to achieve high performing, self-managing, saleable and profitable agribusinesses. So if you break that down, high performing I guess is um, it's, it's whatever it means to, to the individual business but generally it's tied into that final one which is about profitability. Um, it's also about what the business offers, um, the, the, the owners and the people in, in the business as well. Self-managing is really focused on starting to develop a business that can actually work without the input of the business owners. So you can effectively walk away or you can go on holidays and it actually will still keep running. Um, saleable is quite an interesting concept because a lot of people in ag don't feel that their businesses are saleable but whether it's saleable or setting the business up for um, investment from external investors or from the bank it's something to always be thinking about and profitable I guess is quite self-evident so so uh, you know we've got quite a lot to cover tonight so I'll probably get into it but before we move on just a little bit of housekeeping uh, we're we try to keep things quite low key uh, due to people's internet speeds, which we know are quite diabolical in some areas, but we want these webinars to be quite interactive if possible. So on the right hand side of your screens, you should see a little um, little go to webinar tab, which will enable you to actually put some questions into the question box. So we want you to ask as many questions as possible. So if you have anything that comes up in the webinar, please don't hesitate to write it down and we'll have a session at the end where we go through some of those um, some of those questions that come up. So I probably just need to um, indicate that these webinars are presented in association with the um, agribusiness uh, or the beef business management programs. So these programs are underwritten by, um, run in association with a number of partners which is Crow Earth, a mid-tier accounting firm, the Queensland Government through the Department of Ag and Fisheries, Agforce in Queensland and the MLA Donor Company. So we'll talk about these programs a little later but fundamentally the program's about, it focuses on business not production and it's designed to help you sharpen the performance of your business. So those industry and partners are involved because they see how valuable improving the business performance is to the overall ag industry. So um, we'll get into that a, bit a, bit late, a little bit later. And we always like to start all of our webinars with an overview of the um, run quickly over the 12, the ABDI 12 pillars of business best practice. So this is really the basis of our programs and I guess it's what we would consider at ABDI the foundations of any best practice business. So I'll just shoot over these quickly but you'll, you'll find that quite a lot of them come into the uh, business planning process. So firstly we'll start with vision. Um, you have to be clear on where you're going, both 
at a personal level and with the business. This is one of the biggest things that derails a lot of businesses, uh, not actually having a clear plan and not having everyone signed up to the plan as well. When we're thinking about uh, markets, products and customers, uh, we want to be focused on selling the right product to the right customer who's willing to pay what that product's worth. Um, the value of, I guess, frequent and proactive customer engagement as well is quite big um, when it comes to trying to move towards being a price setter, so that's something you have to always be thinking about. Thinking and acting as a corporate is really something that we try and focus on quite a lot. If you want a more streamlined and formal business, um, you need to really think and act like a corporate. This is increasingly important in family businesses, which is quite big in Australia, um, where decisions are made around the kitchen table, I guess, and um, you know, there's often minimal accountability. I guess finances and financials is probably self-evident, but we really need to focus on this. There needs to be discipline around financial planning, discipline around financial management and monitoring of business performance as well. Teams and people, I guess. People fundamentally are your best asset, but they also probably cause the most headaches for people in business. So that doesn't matter whether it's in agriculture or otherwise. It's time and time again, that's what we keep hearing about. So this is, we've put their staff or workers, contractors and families as well, because you need to think about families and their role as um, people in the business. Um, they really need to have a system in place to manage these people effectively and get the most out of them, which leads us onto systems because not just do we need to have systems for people, but we need to develop um, and implement systems, protocols, procedures right across the business. So many of you will have these sorts of things for production, but that's really important that you think about them from an HR perspective, financial management, and so on. This, we talked before about that self-managing business, and this systems is really probably one of the most effective ways to create a business that can run without the constant input of, of the owners. So I'll move on to the next six. Um, talking about risk. So in, in this day and age, risk management is absolutely critical. It's, it's not just production risk and, you know, risk associated with like the weather and all that sort of stuff, but it's business risk, which is risk around suppliers, customers, contracts, intellectual property, and so on. Uh, contract management, understanding legal. So I guess gone are the days where a handshake deal is, is sufficient. Um, you, you really need to make sure you have watertight contracts these days, and that's with suppliers, staff, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's something you really need to be thinking about, um, particularly as we're starting to think more and more along the lines of trying to act like a corporate. Succession is a really important one, and I guess we prefer to actually talk about it as um, business growth and transition, because there's some serious opportunities for business growth, um, as I guess people, skills, funds are all transitioning in and out of the business during a success and pro succession process. So often succession is perceived as uh, you know a potentially negative experience, but we'd like to think of it as a much more positive experience. That, then we move on towards um, value adding and leverage. So that's fundamentally about looking, you know, where else in the value chain can you look to actually add more value? Um, can you establish relationships with other people in the value chain to actually increase increase um, increase the opportunities, which is really what leverage is about there. Sales and marketing uh, probably doesn't get as much attention in agriculture as it should. It's really vital, it's quite a vital way to think about getting more customers who are actually willing to pay through the door, um, both to the door, I guess, which is marketing, and then through the door, which is the sales process. And that comes back to what we were talking about before with customers, products, and markets. And then communication. We all know how important this one is, is um, but it needs to be both internal in the business and within the family, I guess, and then externally with lenders, customers, and suppliers, and so on. So that's a summary of the ABDI 12 pillars. So I think we might just jump into it now. So this is the agenda, but probably before I get going on the agenda, I actually got a little poll which we'd like to run, which it's about um, thinking about who in the, who's on this who is on this call and actually has developed a business plan. So we might just put a poll up on the uh, on the screen there. So what you can do is just click your answer, and then we'll have a look at the results afterwards.
So just spend a bit of time answering it. Just while they're doing that, Dave, um, when we reflect on the 12 pillars, you know, it's, it's nice to think of them in an order like we've presented them tonight, but, but it's just re-emphasising the idea that, you know, the vision, it, it's more like spokes on a wheel with vision at the centre. Um, I know you're going to talk a, a little bit more about that later on, but as we, you know, as we sit here and we do a poll, thinking about whether we've got a business plan or not or, or some semblance of one, I, you know, really listening to you present those 12 pillars, it, it re really reiter reiterated to me the importance of vision um, in terms of getting the rest of it to happen. So um, something for the guys to think about and the girls to think about as they, as they participate in their in this little poll there. Yeah, good. Okay, so um, results are in. I'll just share that with everyone on the screen. So what you can see there is that um, essentially, I guess, you know, quite a lot of people don't have a business plan. Um, what's also encouraging is that quite a lot of people do have a business plan, but they think it probably needs some fine tuning or a major overhaul. And this is not uncommon because we'll talk about this later. The business plan really needs to be what we consider to be a live document. So it needs to be consistently updated to actually match what's is what is what's actually going on in your business. So um, yeah, that's quite interesting to see. And yeah, I think we'll move on. So this this is the agenda. I'll just hide that. So the agenda for today is. Um, I guess we'll start with why to develop a business plan. Like it, it might seem, um, you know, questionable to talk about this, but and particularly because a lot of people are on the call because they're actually quite interested in developing a business plan. But you'll have, there's quite a lot of people out there that there's some serious objections to actually going through the process of developing a business plan. So we'll talk about what the benefits of of a business plan actually are. Then we'll go about thinking about how do we actually create one. And then there's always the difficult part, the hardest part in any journey is actually getting started. So that's the third part of what we'll talk about. So let's let's get into it. So if we're thinking about why we'd actually do a business plan, um, from, from my point of view, this is actually summed up pretty well um, from a workshop that we ran in Bundaberg probably six weeks ago. It, it was it was one of those Queensland Agricultural Training Colleges or QATC workshops and about you know halfway through the first day there was a lady there that just sort of put her hands up and she's like, Oh, this is this is so difficult to sit here and listen to and we were like, Why what you know, why what's going on? And she said, My husband just went and met last week with a major supplier who was going to be like a really I mean a customer who was going to be a really significant customer for us. He had all these great ideas and they were all, um, you know, he was quite gung-ho about it and the customer was very receptive of it. However, what basically happened was they said, this is really good, do you have like this in, or do you have all this stuff written down? And he basically had to just admit that it was all, it was actually all in his head. Like it was a lot of good ideas, um, but it ended up being predominantly in his head. And she just said, if I knew about this stuff a week ago, this would have totally changed the outcome of that meeting because it didn't. It ended up not going as they as they were hoping. So, so I guess that to me sums up the importance of actually um, having a business plan. So, w we spoke before about vision, and that was our very first, um, very first one of the pillars that we talked about. And Mark also spoke about that. So, it's just it's really really important to get clear on where you're going because. This will end up helping you avoid wasted time and effort down the track. So there's actually a saying I like to remember when I think about vision, which is um, there's no point climbing a ladder if the ladder is actually against the wrong wall. It, you know, having a business plan actually helps you focus on where you're really going. So the second part of that is a clear vision is valuable. However, it's actually not valuable at all if everyone in the business is not signed up to it. Um, a business plan really should be involving all the key members of the business. So this really helps through that process of getting everyone on the same page. Um, we also presented at the Young Beef Producers Forum a couple of weeks ago and that was uh, several um, young people came up to us and spoke to us and said, look, this is one of the major issues we're having a problem with is that we're just not on the same page as, as the next generation or, you know, the older generation. And, you know, they said this idea of getting on the same page is so important. The, the next part is, I guess, it, having a business plan really forces you to think about 
um, all aspects of the business, not just production. And I say not just production because um, human nature being what it is, typically when uh, typically we focus on doing the things that we love. So in the case of ag, often this comes down to um, focusing on production. So you really need to start thinking about all those other things, which is staff, finances, customers, and all of those other things. And a business plan can really help help that because it, it actually is quite a holistic process that goes through all of those things. And the final point there is helps optimize your business activities. So one of the biggest issues facing business owners is, um, you know, we hear this all the time, I've got too much to do, I've got limited time, I've got probably limited money as well. How can I allocate my resources so they'll be the most effectively used? And a business plan can really help with that process. So just to continue on from that, I guess having a plan as well means there's there's less uncertainty in the business. And from my point of view, less uncertainty actually leads to much less stress. And, you know, less stress is something we can all do with, um, you know, having a bit little, a little bit less of in our lives. And I think having a, having a plan because it actually forces you to go through, you know, what's the vision, um, how are we going to get there and actually achieve the vision, that really, as I said, takes out a lot of that uncertainty. The, the next point there talks about making your business more attractive to other stakeholders. So um, your, your proposition can actually seem much more attractive if you've got, to, that, that's to, to, to parties like um, banks or lenders or in the case of um, Curider in Queensland, the Rural Investment, um, Rural Lending Authority. Basically, if you have a plan, they will immediately see you as a much lower risk. So this is a much more attractive proposition when you're going to, for example, the bank and you've got your plan and they say that, you know what, you've got, you've got the vision, you've got the plan. Um, they're much more comfortable to be investing money in what you have to offer. And that final point there, I really, really like this one um, because particularly in ag, there's a lot of people that are very entrepreneurial, a lot of people that are, you know, very gung-ho, but ideas will just remain ideas. They'll remain ideas on paper until you actually execute. Um, and, you know, from my point of view, planning really helps you execute because it actually works out what's a step-by-step process to actually go about to, to actually make these things happen. And just, I guess, one final thing for a bit of light relief for everyone. Um, having a business plan really helps you build solid business foundations and it can help you avoid this particular one. And I hope everyone can see this on the screen. Um, it's actually just a GIF image of a silo. Um, it's to toppling to one side and basically taking out the shed that's next to it. And, you know, if you're thinking about your own business, um, that's not something that you want to be happening. So we'll, we'll move on to the next part of, of the webinar tonight, um, which is really about how do you go about creating a plan? So the first part is, you know, when? When is it? When do you need to think about starting to, to develop a business plan? And I, I guess we've put there it's never too late to start. Um, a lot of people think maybe the, the horse is bolted and um, it's too far gone. Um, I'll tell you it's definitely not. Uh, Any time is a good time to develop a business plan. And we've said that it doesn't need to be prompted by any major changes. And what we mean by that is a lot of people think a business plan only needs to happen when either you're converting part of your property to a different enterprise mix, you're, um, uh, you, you know, potentially you're thinking about buying a business or going into partnership with another business or you're actually looking to start a business. People think they're the only times that you develop a business plan. But in actual fact, um, even if it's business as usual, uh, you might just want to formalise things. And this comes back to that idea of, of operating like a corporate. A lot of people that we talk to in our programs are really looking for a way to just formalise things, get some systems in place so that it's, there's, there's less uncertainty and le you know, less strange things going on in the business. So that's, uh, yeah, I think that's really one thing to think about when developing the plan. Um, and I've got again there at the end, which is just, it really requires everyone to be on board. Um, especially in family businesses. So when we're thinking about creating a business plan, um, probably a, a lot of people actually get quite, um, it's quite overwhelming because I think there is a lot to think about when you're developing a plan um, that's as comprehensive as what typically a business plan will be. 
But fundamentally, when it comes down to it, a business plan is basically a summary of, firstly, your goals, then, which is basically, you know, what, what do you want to do with both the business and, I guess, at a personal level as well. Then it needs to be supported by what are the strategies that you're going to use. So what are the plans to actually get to those goals? And finally, the third part is, is action. So what are we going to do? And interestingly, a lot of people, when they think business plan, they only think the first two. Actions really takes a, um, it, it often gets overlooked because a lot of people think we've developed the plan, everything will just work. Um, but you really need to start thinking about what actions can be undertaken um, as a result of developing these plans. So, Mark, just wondering, do you have any comments on on that part? Yeah, I think, um, you know, your comment around um, uh, how to create a business plan and, 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 and the components of the business plan, you know, what does one look like? Um, I, I, what I'd say to everyone is that, there are, first of all, there are templates available. So if you, you know, Uncle Google, if you if you just typed in business plan, if you go and talk to your bank, um, talk to your accountant, I'm sure they've got templates. If you talk to us at ABDI, we've got a template um, that we can send you that would give you a format that you can use to put a business plan together. That's the first thing. So understanding, you know, the pro getting the process or getting getting some sort of format is is not hard to do. The second thing that I'd say is that as you work through the goals, the strategies and the actions, I, I'd really be encouraging everyone to, to stick to what we call the SMART principle. So if we can apply you know, these five uh, components or, or, or think of everything that you're deciding to do in terms of these five things um, based off the, off the word SMART, you, you'll pretty much get it right. So the S stands for simple. You want to keep everything you do as simple as you possibly can. It doesn't have to be complicated to be successful. The M is for measurable. Everything that you do in your business plan, you're looking to put some sort of measurement component around it. Um, typically speaking, everything that gets measured gets done. So always always be able to measure what, you, what you're trying to do in the plan. The next, the next thing, the A in the SMART acronym starts for achievable. Um, you want to actually know that you can actually do it. And the R stands for being realistic about it. Um, often we, we'll open up a business plan and we'll see um, you know, the vision component of the plan and, and then uh, look at what they're trying to achieve in terms of strategy and action and even goals. And um, a lot of those will be, you know, a lot of wishful thinking will be in there. So the idea of being realistic about what you can do based on the resources that you've got available. And the last one, the T, is very, very important when it comes to putting a plan is, and that's putting some timelines against everything. Um, you know, the, the thing that, that causes business plans to fall over or not be referred to or, or not feel, the people who are, who are using them not feeling like they're a useful tool is that they just haven't put any timelines around what they're trying to do in terms of their goals, their strategies and their actions. So if you can write down the word SMART, and, and just to go over them again, the S is for simple, the M is for measurable, the A is for achievable, the R is for realistic, and T is for timeline. Let's put some time against um, each of our goals, strategies, and actions as we, as we put our business plan together. Thanks, Dave. Righto, thanks, Mark. So we'll, we'll move on now. Um, the next... Next thing we're going to talk about is what I guess what's the overall process because Mark just talked about a structure, and fundamentally this process that we're going to look at here is really what the structure of of the plan is actually made up of. So this business planning process is adapted from this um, it's uh, from Walsh 2015, which is from the New South Wales DPI Ag Guide series. Quite a quite a good text if anyone's interested in it, um, and we actually use it as a resource in those QATC workshops I was talking about. So. So the first part which you really have to think about is, um, you know, where, where are you now? And I'll just whiz through these because we'll go through them in a fair bit of detail later. But basically, you just have to think, what's the capability of the business right now? Because that will actually inform what you can do with the business going forward. The next part is really, um, you know, it comes back to that vision again, which is, it doesn't have to be, it can be vision, it can be, you know, business direction, it can be future plans, it doesn't matter what you call it, but it, it, in a nutshell, it's where do we want to be? So, what, what do you see as, you know, th the plan for the business 
um, or the, the outcome that you're looking to achieve. The, ne the next part is really probably the meat of, or the absolute, you know, the, the horsepower behind the plan, um, which is how do we actually go about getting there? And we'll go through those in, that in quite a lot of detail later, but this is really the area where you have to think about each of the component parts of the business. And finally, we have to think about monitoring and recording. Um, basically, it's just reviewing, you know, are, are we there yet? Which is, ha have we met the objectives of the plan and how are we going with it? But I guess it doesn't stop there. What we need to think about is really this evaluate and review. So you need to be thinking about, okay, um, you know, how did everything go? What can we change going forward? And then you need to go right back to the start and go, all right, where are we now? And um, how, how, how has what we've learnt actually changed the way we're thinking about this stuff going forward? And that final part there, which is just, um, it must be a live document. We spoke about this before, which is it must be a document that continuously gets referred to. So, Mark, do you have any comments on that one? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk to the idea of a living document. You know, when we sit and we work with clients um, and they've got a business plan um, that's that's being actively utilised, so it actually, it shows up in the, in the monthly uh, management meeting or the quarterly... A board meeting and it becomes the reference point through which decisions are made um, that's where the that's where the value of a business plan and a, the business planning process really does um, uh, deliver the result because it keeps everyone focused on what we're trying to do here what's what you know where are we trying to take this business um, very valuable that you look at it as being a, a living document um, I mean, most people can put a business plan together around those times when they want to borrow some money and they've got to provide it to an outside party. Sometimes they even will put one together if they want to talk to a customer um, and show them uh, what they're about and and uh, what the vision is for the business and how, how close it is along to say to Okay, Mark, we might have lost you there. Not sure what's happened. Um, oh, all right, I think we might just move on to the next part. So the the, the first part of the plan. So we, we talked about um, the first part of that being really where are you now? So the first part of the plan must be thinking, basically you'll take a, take a step back and you'll actually undertake a stock take of where your business is right now. Um, I guess, as I said before, this will actually really give you a indi good indication of what the boundaries are um, or what your business is capable of and will help inform what you can actually do going forward. So a really good exercise is to review the history of um, why you got where you are today um, because there's quite a lot of lessons in that process which you can actually use to be thinking about what the business plan is going forward. Um, uh, also, probably that point there which talks about the people in the business. So, people are one of the most important assets that you can have. So, the management capability of a business, the skills within a business, the people within a business are just fundamental um, at the end of the day because, you know, anyone can do profits and loss statements, anyone can do, you know, balance sheets and all that sort of stuff. But, but but people and the skills that those people have are just absolutely, absolutely critical, which I guess leads to probably a point which I haven't included there, which might probably should be there, which is around IP. So that stands for intellectual property. So intellectual property is really one of the most undervalued um, assets that people have within um, their businesses and, and, and often agriculture. A lot of people hear the words IP and they go, oh, I didn't think about that. But over time, particularly in multi-generational businesses, these businesses have been accumulating um, intellectual property, which is, you know, ha what, what is the absolute best way to do things? Um, they've just been constantly accumulating all this information. And that's something which is such an important asset, which can add serious value to your business, but a lot of people don't think about it. So it's quite important to put that at the start of the business plan as well when you're doing a stock take. So the next part of this is um, back around that, where are you going? 
So I was going to hand over to Mark. I'm just, I'll check if he's there. Mark, are you there? Can you hear me, Doug? Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. Hello? Yep. Can you hear me? I must have had a microphone problem. No, that's all right. So, okay, well, I'll hand this one over to you, but before I wanted to do that, so basically when we're talking about where are you going, it's about what is the business proposition, but it's also about that vision which we were talking about. So vision, um, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people hate the word. They think it's just another buzzword which doesn't doesn't mean anything to anyone except people in suits in, in um, the city or something like that. But I'll give you a living example. We've got people in our 12-month program and there's three workshop events in the 12-month program. So the first one, they listen to us talking about um, vision and they say, what is this absolute load of bollocks? That you guys are talking about that vision stuff doesn't apply to me. I don't know why you keep talking about it. I don't know why everyone keeps talking about it. Fast forward three months to the next workshop. They go, oh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm starting to sort of see that that vision stuff's probably important because I'm not really clear where the business is actually going. And then fast forward another three months to the final workshop and they go, holy smokes, I wish I was thinking about that vision stuff a long time ago because I, w I wish I thought about it 10 years ago because it would have completely changed the outcome. So I guess that's just a live example of how important this part of the plan actually is. So Mark, do you want to take over there? Okay, well, I'm not sure if, where Mark's gone. So, so fundamentally, we need to think about, um, it, it's both at, at a personal level as well as the business because really the business needs to exist for the people. Um, not the other way around. A lot of people think, you know, that, and that's what working in the business does because so many people are working in the business all the time. They don't take a step back and go, well, hang on, this stuff is supposed to be working for me and actually giving me the outcomes that I want. So, you know, when we talk about what do you personally want, a lot of people have a lot of trouble thinking about that because um, particularly in family businesses, uh, oftentimes they're giving up what they want for the greater good of the business. Um, when in actual fact, if it's just put out there at the beginning, um, put out there on paper, um, that, that's, I guess, really important to communicate that to other people because unless you say it and unless it's out there, it won't actually get communicated um, or taken into consideration. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one now. So the, the, thir the, th the third part of the business plan is really, I guess, quite, it's, it's the crux of the whole thing, which is, um, and as I said before, it's kind of the meat of the whole thing because all of these separate plans, um, which we've listed there, they really need to be thought about. Uh, it's 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 not it's not okay to just sort of think about one or two of them. Uh, we've listed them there because it's quite important to actually go through each of them in a systematic fashion, and I guess start to apply what we talked about before, which is um, you know what are the goals, what are the strategies, and what are the actions. So so when we're talking marketing, it's really as I said before, it's 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 you need to go out there and think about um, what what do the customers want in the marketplace because a lot of people create a product and they think it's the best product out there on the market and we, but if if <laughs> pretty much everyone else is thinking the same thing so if everyone is heading out there with you know the best the best product the best quality um, in in effect they don't really there's no differentiator so. When we're talking about marketing, it's really going through a process of, of reviewing the marketplace, um, thinking about who the customers are, and um, actually considering what their wants, their needs, their drivers are, starting with the customer and thinking, how can I tailor my product to actually meet them, meet their needs? And it might not be that the, the customer, um, it might not be the product, which is the important thing that comes out of this um, marketing plan. It might actually be some other part of um, what you're offering, which can actually um, satisfy their needs. It might be around, you know, um, the, the ease of the transaction or the relationships or, you know, that, that sort of thing. So th this is really what you need to think about when you're going through the marketing plan. The, the production plan is probably self-evident. A lot of um, people actually are very across this um, because that's their bread and butter. They, a lot of people in ag love this stuff. So it, it's basically going through and understanding, well, if I've got a business proposition, or you know, I'm working through business as usual. Uh, fundamentally, you have to think um, in order to meet the objectives and the ultimate long-term plan. What does my production capacity need to look out look like? What does the production schedule need to look like? And I guess this probably leads us into the next one, which is the um, human resource plan. 
So in order to achieve that production plan, which will achieve the overall plan, you need to be thinking about what skills you need for the business um, in, in skills and I guess both labor as well. So often what people forget about is the skills that are already present within the business. Um, t typically, you'll have a serious skill set and within the people that are actually in the business and oftentimes a lot of people aren't being utilised to their full capacity as well um, because people are in roles that they've always just been in and they got put in those roles because that's what needed to be filled. So at ABDI we talk about a concept called the um, highest dollar productive zone which is really about where can each person in the business, um, particularly key decision makers or management um, members within the business, where can they spend the time, the most amount of time in order to yield the most amount of value for the business. So someone might be really good at, um, you know, exceptional at customer engagement and they might be terrible at doing the finances, but they're doing, they're doing the books because that's just what they have to do. So it's really going back through, I guess, a systematic process of, um, of thinking, um, you know, who, who do we actually have in the business? What skills do we need to, in order to make the plan work? and um, how can we go about marrying the two up. So it starts with an organisational chart um, and you know, then you need to think about potentially recruitment which is starting to develop the job descriptions and, and actually you know, what skills you need. I guess the skills audit is another way of, um, of going through that process as well. So, and then I guess finances. Finances is a really important one because it typically doesn't get a lot of um, doesn't get a lot of attention in um, in developing this business plan um, because it's an area that a lot of people are quite um, quite scared of. I guess it's um, not an area a lot of people are comfortable with, so often it gets sort of swept under the rug. But if if you're applying for um, you know you're applying for finance or things like that, it's an area that really needs some serious attention. So um, whether that requires engaging external advisors um, and typically this should actually because bringing an accountant into this process is is really critical because they're the people that are best placed to actually be giving you the advice about what your financial capabilities are. So if we move on to succession plan, um, the succession plan process is not everyone's going through a succession process, but if you are, there's considerations in the succession planning process which need to be included in this plan. Um, and as we said before, a succession plan can exist as part of a business plan or it can, can um, sort of sit in parallel with it. Um, but there'll definitely be things that are going into succession plan which need to be brought into um, the business plan. So I've just got a message here from Mark saying he is back on board. So Mark, did you want to say something? No, okay, that's all right. So the um, the next part, I guess, is risk management plan. So we talked before about one of the real benefits of a, of a business plan is really about identifying what the different areas of risk are in the business, working out ways to mitigate them. And um, then actually, I guess it goes full circle, which is you keep thinking about, you know, what are the risks? How can you manage those risks? What's the residual risk after um, after managing or mitigating the risk? And that's just that's not just production risk, as we said before. There's risks around, you know, con, um, contracts, as we said, not being watertight. There's risks around, um, you know, suppliers and all that sort of stuff, which need to be thought about. <clears throat> so a risk management plan really needs to be a very well, um, very well documented um, segment within the plan, and quite a lot of quite a lot of the. Um, you know, pe people who you're developing the plan for will want to see that risk management plan because they'll want to see that you've considered all of the risks as part of uh, this business planning process. And then finally, there's the um, implementation and action plan. So this is just so important because um, a lot of people forget, as I said before, that action side of things. A lot of people go through the process of developing a plan but then don't actually assign actions or responsibility uh, to people within the business to actually make sure that the plan actually happens. So this is, I guess, often will include it as a separate section within the plan to actually be thinking about. Um, and, and that really means that it just so you can tick a few tick boxes against when people actually get things done. 
which I guess is quite a good thing because it leads us into our next part here, which talks about how do we evaluate progress. So the way, the reason that led, led in quite well was because when you're developing that action and implementation plan, one of the big, biggest issues um, family businesses in, um, I guess not just Australia, anywhere probably face is that real issues around accountability. So accountability, um, you know, you, you, people need to be doing what they say they're going to be doing. And if they don't do it, they need to be getting pulled up on it. So how do you actually make sure those things happen? So uh, we talked before about developing these SMART um, goals or another one there is KPIs, which stands for Key Performance Indicators. So really when you're, when you're setting this whole process up in each of those different segments of the plan, you need to be assigning goals at the start of the plan. Where relevant, you need to be setting these key performance indicators and that's particularly relevant for, for staff to make sure that start, um, you know, that staff and their time is being optimised and they're actually delivering against what they say they're going to do. Um, to do, and that's really important for family businesses. This this idea of actually having KPIs that people can be held against, and, and it's a tool that's worked quite well for a lot of businesses we work with. Um, the, the the next part is really around. There needs to be a system that's actually developed to make sure that um, that performance of the business and performance against the plan is actually evaluated and assessed on a routine basis. So at ABDI, we advocate uh, monthly management meetings. We call them advisory board meetings. It doesn't matter what you call them. But as long as every month you get together with the key members of the business and um, you know, key decision makers or management, uh, management members of the management team, and actually you go through uh, all of the different aspects of the business. And, and typically the start of that management meeting will involve reviewing progress against either the business plan or against, um, you know, in, interim plans such as what we have is a 180 day plan that we'll use, which is what are the actions over the next six months that need to happen in order to contribute to the overall business objectives. So that, that's a really important tool that can be used, those monthly management meetings. Then, then we'll talk about quarterly meetings with accountants and advisors. So it's really important that you get together with relevant advisors um, as frequently as possible and, and often if, you, if you're getting together quarterly, it means that if there's a problem in the next quarter, you can actually address it. But if you're getting together with these advisors once a year and then there's going to be a problem within the next three months, typically these things won't get picked up. And when we talk about meeting with the accountant or advisor, um, talking to your accountant is really important because it's often those finances which are an area that people don't quite understand and don't... Um, don't know how to monitor it as well as as well as they they potentially should. So working closely with your accountant and keeping in touch with them will actually help with that whole process. And then the idea of formal and informal meetings with staff. So you should be really meeting with staff members to making on, on a regular basis to make sure they're on track to achieve the things that are within the plan. And, and that should be informal, um, touching base with them on a regular basis. But it actually absolutely has to have formal aspects to it as well like formal business re formal performance reviews um, where you'll assess those kpis and people's performance against those kpis and it actually gives you um, you know a very black and white way of assessing how things are tracking and how staff members are tracking as well and that final point there is around making sure that you actually do something with your evaluation results. And that comes right back to that original diagram, which is you know, the, the whole process where it goes back to the start and starts again. So if you find something that's not working, you need to do something about it. Similarly, if you find something that is working, um, then you need to be capitalizing on that and making sure that that process is built in to, to everything else that you're doing. So I know I'm just watching the time and I know we probably need to wrap things up pretty quickly. So the final point is around getting started. So we've put there that, that someone must take charge and have ownership. This is, you know, so common in these processes and it's very common in succession processes as well where there's the idea and potentially the, and often the will to do, th to do these things, but there's not actually anyone who's driving the bus. So someone actually has to take charge of this process and see it, see it through from the start to, to the end. When we're talking about getting um, everyone's input, we talked before about getting people on the same page and 
it's really important that because this is such a comprehensive document that covers off on lots of different aspects of the business, everyone that is the key key decision makers in the business needs to have contribution to this process. So if you know you you need to find out things about the marketing side of things, you need to talk to the person who's responsible for the marketing. You can't, I guess, assumptions to assume is to make an ass out of you and me. Assuming things, particularly when you're putting them into a business plan, can lead to a lot of trouble. The idea there about formally documenting um, all the ideas, it comes back to that story where someone had a lot of great ideas, but they hadn't written them down on paper. And if they're not written down on paper, um, it's really difficult to communicate them. It's really difficult to actually make sure that the numbers add up. And it's really difficult to actually make sure that the plan is really the right plan um, because it's you can't actually review the whole process from beginning to end. And we've spoken about involving external parties. so. The business planning process should involve external parties. It should involve people like your accountant. Potentially, it might require um, legal advisors. And quite often, an external party, such as a business advisor, is really well placed to drive this business planning process and development of a business plan within the business because they're not actually emotionally connected or emotionally invested to the outcome, they'll see things very objectively and they'll actually drive the process because that's what they're engaged to do. And that final point is really around plan, act and review. So it's it's really around, um, you know, do, do the planning, then you need to act on the plan, but then you need to make sure that you review the process. And it comes back to the idea of it being a live document. And I guess then the process needs to begin again. And those checks and balances that we put in place, such as the monthly um, monthly management meetings, those quarterly meetings, will really um, make sure that this stuff happens. So that, I guess, finalises um, the, the main part of the webinar, but there's a couple of questions here which I might just um, refer to. I mean, the question is, will a copy of the presentation be available? Um, yes, it will. And... There's another question there, which I'm not sure what it refers to, but um, so yeah, we might just move on. So the final part of this presentation is really just letting you know that this webinar is run as part of um, ABDI's agribusiness management programs, which are done in support with all of those partners I spoke about before, which is Crow Horworth, the MLA donor company, AgForce, and the Department of Ag in Queensland. So there's two components to it. There's firstly, there's a there's a 12 week, it's called the Agribusiness by Design Business Intensive Program. And it's really, it consists of two, two day workshop and then monthly online catch ups with mentors in the group. And it's, it's about teaching the fundamentals of business best practice, which is a lot of those things that actually go into the business plan. And a lot of those things that we were discussing earlier today. The next, and I guess the, the next step up from that is the 12 month Agribusiness Management Program, which is really focused on taking all of those fundamentals to the next level and actually implementing those principles of business best practice in your business. And the, re the way you'll do that is um, there's actually monthly touch points with a personal mentor, personal business mentor. And there's one of the most valuable things that people find is the engagement with other people in the group because it's really motivating and, and helps them keep on track. And, and just finally there, the, the um, QATC farm business management skill set. So that was the uh, program I was talking about that's rolled out, um, being run through Queensland. And it's focused, it's a VET accredited, so vocational education training accredited course, which leads to a diploma in ag. And ABDI facilitates the workshops that, um, that are associated with that program. And the four main topics in that program are developing a business plan, managing business risk, um, monitoring business performance and business structures and relationships. So it's a bit of food for thought if you're looking to actually start developing a business plan for your own business and you're just looking for a bit of um, support about how you should actually be thinking about these these things. So I, I guess if you want to find out more about the program, you can always go to the web page. The link is up there or if you just go to abdi.com.au, you'll find links to all of the programs. Um, please shoot us an email if you have any questions or anything like that or give us a call on that number there. So that about wraps up things for this evening. Um, one last thing is when you finish up on the webinar, there'll actually be a, um, a survey that'll pop up 
these surveys just help us make sure that these these webinars are actually useful for you. Um, useful for you. Actually, I've just there's another question that's come up. So, are these programs available across all of Australia? Um, my the, the response to that is at the moment. Um, and for the first half of 2018, they're focused on Queensland, but they will be moving into Southern Australia in the second half of 2018. So, but please don't, you know, feel free to give us a call um, or just keep keep tabs on the website um, if that's something you'd like to find out more about. So, as I said, that wraps up things for tonight. Um, please take the time to fill out the survey at the end. Um, and if you have any questions at all about the business planning process or just business management in general, please feel free to get in touch with us and um, yeah good luck developing a business plan if you're going to and thank you very much I'll end the webinar there